Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Drums webinar on video, telling more than just a story on mobile with our partners Spreadfast and Lithium. My name is Naomi Taylor, and I'll be your host today, and I'm delighted to be joined by some video legends at Facebook, Just Eat, and Lego. Everyone listening will know that video harnesses the power of storytelling in ways that pure audio and written content cannot. The visual element adds a whole new dimension of spinning yarns that pulls our audiences into a whole new world of discovery. And as many of you listening will know, over half the content we're consuming is on our mobiles in video formats. And we have to be creating them in tandem with the fact that they'll be consumed on the move, on the bus, walking to work, on the small rectangular screens that we're carrying around in our pockets. And as marketers, we also have to consider that this content really needs to speak to audiences that pulls them in with relevant, accessible and visually engaging formats. We are so lucky today to be joined by Caitlin Ryan, who is the Regional Creative Director of MIA at Facebook, uh, David Moynihan, who is the Global Director of Digital Consumer Engagement at Lego, and Rachel Green, Senior Social Media Marketing Manager at Just Eat. This is a really fantastic speaker lineup this morning, so we thank you all for joining us. And we're really looking forward to hearing your tips and tricks for telling more than just a story on mobile. A reminder to our audience that this webinar is very interactive. So if you have any burning questions, please feel free to pop them in the chat box at the side of your screen. And we can ask the questions in a short Q&A at the end of the webinar. Um, and without further ado, I will stop rambling on. And I'd like to pass over to Anurag Abinashi at Spreadfast, who's going to give us a little bit more insight into video and what it can do for our audiences. Welcome, Anurag. Thank you, Naomi. Can you see my screen all right? I can indeed. Super. So thanks very much for that introduction. As you've said, we've got three great speakers on this webinar today. And just before we hear from them, I'd like to set the scene a little bit for why we're here and why mobile video matters. So it's no secret or surprise really that European marketers are set to spend huge amounts of money on mobile advertising over the next five years. According to a recent Forrester study, 70% of all digital ad spend in Europe by 2022 will be on mobile. If we dig into the actual numbers, we see that mobile ad spend in particular in 2017 was 19.3 billion euros in Europe. And that's predicted to more than double to 40.3 billion euros in 2022. That gives us a compounded annual growth rate of 15.9%, which is huge, absolutely huge. If we then start to dig into where the spend is going, a huge proportion of the spend we see is going on video. I mean, video ads have an average click-through rate of 1.84%, which is the highest of all the digital ad formats. 78% of consumers watch online videos every week. Users view more than 100 million hours of video each day on Facebook alone. And users are increasingly becoming conditioned as a result to getting their marketing messages through video. What's great for marketers here is this. And viewers retain 95% of a message when they watch it in a video compared to 10% when reading it in text. Again, those numbers are absolutely phenomenal. However, it's becoming increasingly clear it simply isn't enough to produce video for paid mobile advertising alone. What's becoming critical in this post-truth world is building trust as brands, and marketers are increasingly turning to mobile video as part of their organic strategies. According to Social Bakers, Facebook videos receive 135% more organic reach on average than a Facebook photo, which is another really interesting stat. Of course, the shift to a mobile video-enabled strategy brings with it its own challenges. Marketers now have to produce a lot more content in a much shorter period of time for different formats and with the same budget. Getting what they produce for what consumer on what platform is therefore pretty critical. At Spreadfast, we've seen our consumers live to overcome these challenges in four ways. They focused on the content they're producing, first of all, both in terms of the story they're telling and in terms of the quality of the production and its consistency with their brand. They've stayed on top of new mobile video-driven products, with IGTV being the latest product to grab their attention. 
And they were experimenting with this in different ways already, building on their knowledge as they do so. They've become better at tracking the performance of the content they're publishing onto social media. And finally, they've become better at identifying influencers and great influencer content that's out there and reusing this content once they've obtained the appropriate consent to boost their own content offerings. One theme that has emerged from all this is the theme of storytelling and of centralizing the narrative around video. And with that, I'd like to welcome to the webinar, Caitlin Ryan from Facebook to give us her insights. Hi, can you hear me? Oops. Wait a minute, sorry. I'm just trying to get my cursor to, sorry. And I keep show the cursor. Sorry, I'm just having a problem with um, there. Can you see me and hear that's, me? That's you, Caitlin. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, fantastic to be here. Uh, my name is Caitlin Ryan uh, from the Creative Shop at Facebook um, and I'm here to talk about the continuing evolution and revolution that's mobile first advertising um, which is obviously an incredibly fast growing format but also specifically today I'd love to talk about how we're thinking about building video for that and ultimately how we go beyond building for mobile and build for people. So with the growing bandwidth and lots of new places to build and share content, we're seeing an expanding spectrum of ways people consume content on their mobile devices, from the short and bite-sized at one end of the spectrum, uh, but also planning for at the longer at the other end. So with 2.7 billion smartphone users next year, the amount of content created and the speed at which people consume is only continued to grow. So as a consequence, how we build is meaningful, effective, great content will also continue to change. What's exciting for me is that the creative industry has accepted this challenge to adapt to speak the mobile language. In the last year alone, we've made huge leaps across many frontiers as an industry in creating for these ever-changing consumer behaviors. We've learned together how to reimagine ideas for mobile feed video for years now. We're moving from converting existing assets for mobile to creating mobile first work, like Google playing with stories in motion, Porsche playing with fast visceral motion, and Nike playing with type and speed. Stories are a new way to communicate and connect and something I really wanted to talk about today. I'm loving working with stories and so are brands. It's quick, playful, the full screen and attention grabbing and what I think is exciting for creators is the authenticity and it being in real time. They disappear after 24 hours for consumers so there's no pressure to be perfect. Stories are visual and interactive. They fulfill people's needs to consume interesting content and their need to interact and share. And stories match people. They hold their phones vertically about 90% of the time we're finding. So why not build a visual medium that's fully vertical? It's not just on Instagram uh, where people are embracing stories. We're seeing it across all of our platforms um, and so, much, so many fun and inventive creative expressions across the Facebook family. A big part of the stories experience is taking full advantage of the vertical view, the dominant way people hold their mobile devices. We're seeing all kinds of creators reinventing storytelling through a vertical lens. As this trend begins to set in, we have high hopes for bespoke content. Here are some content creators that we're working with that are embracing vertical as legitimate video canvas. People share and consume content differently in stories than they do in feed. The full screen format removes distractions so people are fully engaged. Video engagement is shining through the numbers. In fact, 40% of Instagram stories are video and 60% of those are viewed with the sound on, which I think is very new for especially creators on our platform. Also, one in five stories gets a direct message, which implies that people are enjoying connecting one-on-one -on -one in stories. So we've talked about mobile first and the consequences of that when we're creating, but I really also want to talk to you today about people first. 
So we're shaping our ideas for video in all of these new bubble expressions and the way we do that is more important than ever. But what about the ideas themselves? What can we do to also be a people first industry, building people first ideas and how does that take place with video? We see a massive opportunity to deepen connections when we build ideas that drive value with people and brands by being people first. But where on earth do we start with that? So at Facebook, when we think about people, we think about the connections between them. We recognize the cultural importance of enabling people to get closer to each other and build communities because it's a big part of what makes us human. That's why a year ago we refined, refined our mission to reflect this in our product development and across how we work as a company. It's no surprise that these world-changing ideas that bring people together are also the ideas that our creative community celebrates. It also shouldn't be surprising that more than 70% of Cannes Grand Prix winners in the past five years built ideas designed to bring people together. And we're impressed, delighted and inspired every day by the communities we see forming and growing across our platforms. Here are just a few of these communities. Nina and Rafa are two friends and designers from Barcelona who challenged themselves to design something new every day and then took that challenge to Instagram where they were joined by 150,000 more design passionate people. This is Mel from Bristol, England. After becoming a mum, she needed to find the motivation and time to get out and run. She organised her friends to get her out for a run and then turned that into a movement with 14,000 people participating. The students of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida experienced firsthand the tragedy of gun violence and decided they wouldn't be satisfied with complacency anymore and 38 days later had organised themselves and marked with millions. And inhabitants at Martha's Vineyard connect to fight loneliness and solve some of the practical problems that arise when tourists leave the island deserted in the winter. It's hundreds of millions of people are connecting through countless communities like these on our platforms every day. They do it to be part of something bigger, to feel significant and to build their own identity and also to collaborate on making a difference. And we're impressed, delighted and inspired every day by these communities we see forming and growing across our platforms. Ideas, when put into action, have their own gravity. They make people realise that there are others like me. They make people jump on and join. Ideas are the starter kits for people when something common to bond as communities. So you'll all be familiar with Did You Hear Yanni or Laurel? A question accompanied by the soundtrack triggered people to form into communities of Yannis or Laurels. The hashtag, 300, hashtag 360 day soft type attracted thousands of designers to join and create collective type art. And the symbol of pink hats crystallised the bond between people who formed the Women's March movement. Without ideas, an action, a provocation, something in common often stays just that. It's the creativity and passion people bring to these ideas that trigger, fuel and strengthen communities. In fact, it's these community creating ideas that are changing the world. So that's all good and well, but how do we do this? How do we create these ideas with gravity? Well, that's the hard part, of course, but that's where talented, creative people are continually striving forward. There's no singular magic formula, but our platforms have been built for people to come together around these types of ideas. And there are some patterns we can, we may see that you, we can see that may allow you to seize this opportunity as a fast track to make your brand to matter more, particularly when building for video. We recommend three steps to tap into the power of community and thus create value for people and for brand. First, discover these communities. Second, astound them with an idea that exerts gravity. And lastly, build your brand more broadly by expanding your communities. Inspire, you all know about the Star Wars where, uh, and here is with, with um, sorry, just lost my place a bit there, entertain. So, with their idea of breaking two, Nike inspired the marathon running community to think about their own two hour barrier. They tried the unthinkable and gave breaking the barrier a go which, with, they all, with all they had. They created a virtual stadium around the world for 20 million people to share in this idea, this goal, this movement. By this astounding act, they inspired a globally distributed community of marathon obsessors, but really far beyond. True to their mission of if you have a body, you're an athlete, and their mantra, just do it. They inspired all people to attempt their own impossible. For many, breaking two wasn't about breaking the two-hour marathon barrier. 
became a metaphor for them just to finish two miles or to smash any goal that seemed out of reach. I'm just going to play you the film now. You won't hear the sound, but you'll see the subtitles. So by building video, we can create a, a movement for people to gather around, but also think about using video in different ways. In the immediate way, like in Instagram stories, Facebook Live is a way of engaging with the community in, in real time, and an immersive in Facebook feed. So the bottom line is people tuned in and turned on 20 million people reached with the live event, 5.2 million video views, a 34 minute average view time, and 127 concurrent live streams. So what I want to talk to you today was not just about how to build for mobile first, but also I think really importantly is how we're building for people first by thinking about the communities they belong to. Thank you. Lovely, thanks Caitlin. Can everyone hear me and see my screen okay? Yes, that's great. Thanks, Rachel. Wonderful. Um, brilliant. Thanks so much. That was absolutely brilliant. And I think, uh, hopefully I can build on the stories that Caitlin's already told. Uh, my name's Rachel. I'm the social media lead at Just Eat. It's my responsibility to do all the social media strategy, creative and media. Before Just Eat, I was at O2 and I've also worked in the agency world as well. So we've got today a really fascinating uh, topic, video telling more than a story on mobile. But what I find interesting about this topic is actually that very first word, the word video. What does video mean? Because a video is one of these, and I'm sure some of the kids that have been born today wouldn't actually even know what this means. And I think this is part of the challenge that we've actually got as marketers, that a video can mean a format, it can mean where you consume something, it can be a channel, it can be an extension of TV. So how as brands should we use it is something I want to explore. And to start that, I wanna take it right back. Let's start at the beginning. So when video and film first started, it was here, it was in the cinema. People used to travel to go to the cinema. The stories were limited, they were created, and they were made by experts. But what changed when the internet came along, as I don't need to tell most of you here, is this absolute explosion of anyone being able to create. So no longer, you know, was it down to the filmmakers and the experts, but anyone in their bedroom could start to make millions out of filming themselves with a camera. And I think there hasn't been a change of a video that's been, you know, as interesting as what Caitlin has just talked about, which is story. Now, interesting, just that shift is the fact it's, well, it did, Disappears. People are free to do what they're doing with their day without it being judged or it being curated by others. 
has just got bigger and bigger and these are some stats from Facebook which show in the last couple of years alone that you know Instagram stories has gone up to 500 million users which is an incredible amount of users within that time but as we speak about you know Instagram that growth of stories I think it's worth almost taking a step back to Snapchat sorry Caitlin um, who are almost sort of the godfather of this of you know this disappearing content what's different and slightly interesting about Snapchat is as soon as you open the app you're invited to create content and what they're saying is that on average people are sending 20 snaps a day now we may talk to lots of different people throughout the day we may text them we may speak face to face but to actually share and communicate with others using uh, video and pictures as a platform is kind of a first it's something that's changing more and more in recent years and it has historically and it's those pictures and the fact that they're consuming so much content they're consuming 10 billion videos a day on the platform just shows what we have brand as brands really have to compete with people are taking more pictures on snapchat than they are actually their iphones which is why they call themselves the camera company so therefore i when people when everyone is a creator they're creating all the time how can we as brands really stand out how can we add value into this midst of video be it moving content be it long form to ensure that we're really sort of adding value to people's lives and adding you know making our brand really stand out so that's what I'm gonna talk about for the next few minutes so as mentioned at the beginning, I'm from Just Eat. Uh, for any of you that don't know who Just Eat are, I hope you do. We are probably the world's biggest takeaway platform. We're in 13 different markets. We've got almost 100,000 restaurant partners and we sell five takeaways or hot delivered meals, you may say, uh, every single second of the day. And that was last year. And even on Christmas Day alone, we sold 7,000 margarita pizzas in the UK, which I find quite amusing. We have lots of takeaway facts, but I won't I won't take you down this path. I'll talk instead about about video and what it does at Just Eat. So what's interesting about video is that it can actually do so many different things. It can drive consideration, it can change behavior. Ultimately, uh, for myself as you know, social media person, my job is to drive orders. But so we look at video through two different lenses and split split it into two areas. The first is relevance, which is how can we be relevant in your life, make you like us as a brand? And the second one is choose, which is how do we make you choose us um, and choose just eat over any of our competitors? So I've got four examples of ways that we have thought about video maybe slightly differently or you know maybe it's not different you can tell me um, but just for examples of things that we've done now the first is around a specific audience challenge and I think it's really interesting what uh, Caitlin was saying about communities because we had a challenge with a particular segment we want to drive brand consideration within 18 to 24 year olds as a brand we're quite reliant on TV we're always on with TV and we use it very much uh, to tell our brand story but we know this audience is watching TV less than that we know that we're struggling to reach them in places where we would normally tell our brand story and build that salience with them so knowing that there's these 18 to 24 year olds we've got behavioral segmentation that we apply to them as well rather than going how can we communicate with them we go okay who has this community who's already engaged with them and we found a uh, PAC or PAQ who are essentially a TV show. It's every week that they release a show, but it's on YouTube. Every Thursday, it's a 20 to 25 minute episode. And it's fronted by four guys who talk about fashion each week, an area which I think most of you quite rightly would go just eat in fashion, really. It's probably, probably a little bit strange, but that's why we use someone like, you know, pack to talk on our behalf all of these guys are have a really distinctive personality i personally compare it to the spice girls you know they're all slightly different the things that everyone's got a favorite and they they what we did was we gave them our brand and we said well what, what would you do with it but essentially unlinquish uh relinquish that control and they came back with this fabulous idea which was to 
to take our delivery jacket and redesign it. So they all went away, they all worked with designers, and that's really what the episode focuses on. But what they did was really keep the brand at the heart of it. They're very open about working with Just Eat in the beginning. And they made the three rules as they go through. It has to have the logo on it, it has to show our, bla our brand colour ray, um, and also um, it has to be road safe, has to you know be practical and actually like a delivery jacket. Now, they also created another, they created lots of other content to help us get this out in the most interesting way, including um, Q and A's on Instagram stories with each of the uh, presenters. But I think the results are quite interesting. So. 1.36 million video views. In a media world, that's not that many. You can always buy views. It's the next stat which is most interesting. 16.6 minutes average watch time on the YouTube content. So that accounted for, I think it was 920,000 of those views. I worked it out and that's 29 years of content consumed. We never could have created something on our own which would have had that kind of consumption. And the fact that the engagement was so positive, 99.7% positive engagement, and it was an audience that were clearly engaged in the content means that we really reached them in a way we couldn't have on our own. So that was my first rule in thinking of things differently. Essentially hijacking communities, there's probably a nicer word out there than hijacking, but partnering with people that already had the community you want. Um, the second area in provide people with what um, we are the headline X. My job is by the time X Factor starts on a Saturday or Sunday is to make sure that people already have a takeaway in their hands or really thinking about takeaway. These people love X Factor. How can we give them more, more X Factor completely long form series? It's called Just Eats X You've got Becca Dudley there, a bit like our customers. She has that connector between the quite glamorous X Factor, the takeaway at home, sitting in there with you, a little bit like Gogglebox in the show. So we, and just each single week, we give them exclusive, it's about five minutes long. And the, the results, particularly, might do some awareness. Consideration, but actually, our biggest sales driver out, and the cost per order is about a third of that of our channel, which shows with an audience we've managed to drive kind of a lot of objectives. Which one of the most exciting things about social media is that you can drive these dual objectives. And also for me, it taught me that long form content single the time we're trying to just move and shorter but if the, you actually can afford to do long form as well the next thing i want to quickly talk about is letting people create with your brand we saw already people love to create they love to share videos we can see that in the use of instagram stories and i think we need to start thinking of videos just us putting out you know a moving image but how do we let people play create and interact and the lens is a really exciting a lens is a really simple and exciting way to do this um, what's interesting about lenses is how much more accessible they are now. So if your brand, you know, if you haven't got a huge amount of budget to play with, all of the, um, it's a, there's an open source studio that Snapchat now has anyone, any designer could probably create lenses in a couple of hours. Using lenses, we use it to drive around key order moments and we've seen incredible results with something as simple as this, where they can just swipe up to, um, to then order, but already, but also this lens in particular, over 100,000 people shared that with their friends and over 60,000 people shared it into their memories. So every time they go into memories, they're seeing our brand again and again. And it's obviously much stronger for us to have you sharing something with our logo on it with your friends than it is for us to put out something. So it's again driving that awareness, but also cheap orders, which is ultimately what we want. And the final thing I want to talk about is adapting and designing for channel. Now, there's lots of rules around signing for channel, get your logo in really early, cut it down to five seconds, 10 seconds, wherever it may be. But I imagine most um, social marketers on, you know, on the line have had a brief where they've either been asked to put you know, a TV advert into social media or maybe something else which doesn't really quite fit 
TV is designed for TV and it does the most fabulous job. And how you adapt that is really a question of how are you then designing for the channel? So this is one example of something we did. We use, This is a Facebook canvas. As most of you will know, you click on an ad in feed and then you get taken to this full screen experience. And rather than just having the advert in there, what we've done is we've created these sliders at the bottom, which allows people to sit there and play and pick their food and change their feet. Whilst in the meantime, having that TV ad or wherever it may be in that little video at the top. So I think this is quite a nice idea of how you can really take what was a format for another channel and build it into that social world and let people stop and play. So just, just to recap on what I've said, firstly, uh, hijack, although not the best word, but find the audience that you want to get to and, you know, put your trust in other people to tell your brand story. Um, build content for an audience. It sounds really simple and basic, but I think the results speak for themselves. Let your audience own your content. You don't always have to do it and make sure your content is actually channel first. That You're not just cutting it down, but making it something people want to uh, engage with. And that's it for me. Thank you very much. Hi, David. I think you need to put your um, mic on. Hi, can you hear me now, guys? That's great. Perfect. Thanks. Sorry about that. There I was clicking away. Um, <laughs> th thanks for your patience and that brief interlude there. Um, I'm David Moynihan. I am Director for Parents and Family Engagement at LEGO. Um, I think we've heard a lot of great insights today. So for this final stretch, I wanted to talk a bit about how LEGO is embracing uh, mobile video. Um, I've been at LEGO for several years now, um, leading a team that creates digital content across uh, platforms such as Facebook and Instagram. My background is actually media publishers such as Hearst and Time Inc, who you would know best for uh, the editorial brands that they run, such as Enemy, Cosmopolitan, Esquire, um, L. Um, just trying to. So hopefully Lego doesn't need too much of an introduction, but I think most people are familiar with us as one of the biggest toy companies in the world and one of the most loved and trusted brands. Our mission is to inspire and develop the builders of tomorrow. We celebrate play and learning and the many important benefits that they can bring to children. So, of course, this is encapsulated by our brand values of imagination, creativity, fun, learning, caring and quality. Um, we know only too well that children hold the key to the future. And so we want to play a very important part in enabling them to thrive and fulfill their potential. Um, so that gives you a bit of the background to Lego. I've got a quick video now that will show you. Um, some of the activities that we have across digital platforms and social media.
Cool. So you'll have seen there that innovation and the audience first approach are at, are at the heart of uh, what we do. This is a response to the way in which media consumption is changing. As we know, advertising avoidance behaviours are growing. So we need an additional layer of communications that both win attention and move the needle for our business. Audience first content taps into consumer passion points and is channel optimised. We've built new in-house teams of digital content specialists with backgrounds that include BuzzFeed and the BBC. We see content marketing needing to tap into the strengths of editorial content by being real time and data driven. The results we get as a result of this new approach tend to show a significant increase in organic reach and engagement, as well as marketing efficiencies such as a lower cost per engagement. But reach and engagement for their own sake can be worthless. There must be a clear problem being tackled for your audience and for your brand to create value for the audience and to remove barriers to your brand. So the communication sweet spot is where audience needs and brand needs overlap. Sorry, David, I think you just need to quickly um, press the play button so you can show your presentation again. Thank you. Cool, is that better? That's perfect. Good. Um, in other words, why should anyone care? You know, newsfeed users are viewing 300 feet of content per day. Why should anyone take any notice of you? So we build on audience insights that enable us to be a useful addition to the newsfeed. Busy parents need ideas for cool stuff to do with their kids. So we serve that need with short snackable videos that provide play inspiration. You can see here we shoot content with our in-house video team that looks like the language of the newsfeed. Our play videos have more in common with BuzzFeed Tasty or BuzzFeed Nifty than they do with ads. By being hands only, fast, and fine with sound off. That middle image is an influencer called the Dad Lab, who's very popular with parents and who we partnered with there, similar to what Rachel was just saying about at Just Eat, um, really partnering with people to reach um, lower affinity audiences. Sorry, David, it's, we've actually, um, it's disappeared. If you can try and press the play button again, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Is that's, that better? That's the one. Perfect. Thank you. Cool. If I jump back, this was the slide I was talking about a moment ago, which was probably confusing you if you couldn't see it. Um, so we build on data that tells us that content with a strong emotional kick is highly shared and shares mean that precious word of mouth advocacy. So these videos you see here tapped into the nostalgia for sets from parents own childhoods. The humour of a dad being transformed into a comedy superhero by his two young daughters and a series of play experts explaining the value of play to new mums and dads. And of course, the nature of mobile video means that it's relatively easy to test ideas at low cost and try new formats. The video on the left is a 360 video that allowed viewers to experience a new Lego roller coaster set as if they were riding in it. The vertical video was shot on a mobile to deliver Instagram stories live from the Jurassic World premiere. And the middle video was a frozen uh, video which went on to be our most popular Facebook post ever. We were challenged to raise awareness of the fact that we create Lego Disney frozen sets. So our solution was to film a clever little science trick where kids can experience Elsa's magic powers by touching an ice cube to a glass of water to make it instantly freeze. Craft activity videos and videos with a wow factor can be huge on Facebook, and this was no exception. You can see some from the 40 million organic reach to the 260,000 shares and 30,000 comments. It was an organic smash hit. We then retargeted people who had engaged with the video with conversion ads that promoted the sets themselves, and we saw improved engagement and sales results versus the audience who had not engaged with the original audience first content. And so again, the key point is that reach and engagement can be great, but they are not sales. They are proxies, not outcomes. And so we're always looking to connect reach and engagement to a sales outcome. We do that in a number of ways. We have a big data team who crunch millions of uh, advanced analytics data points to understand the variables. 
We use qualitative research such as focus groups or brand lift studies to understand whether audiences are more likely to purchase. And of course, we see value creation from the marketing efficiencies that organic reach and lower costs per engagement can deliver. So to wrap up then, 10 quick ways to win a mobile video. Um, firstly, watch everything on mobile before publishing. It's amazing how few people do this and it's amazing how different it can feel in the channel format it will be published in. Always watch it with the sound off first. Um, if it's likely to go onto a channel where users will have the sound off. We see something like 80% of our newsfeed users on Facebook have sound off and it's a completely different experience. We obsess over the first five seconds and then keep it pacey because we know that content has to be thumb stopping and have a sense of urgency or people will just keep scrolling. We always aim to be clear on what the one message is. If you had to sum up the purpose of the video in one sentence, what would it be? We try and vary production values wherever possible, from iPhone at one end to a production agency at the other. There's no one rule here, but we, I would say think of the phrase horses for courses and tailor your production to the story or format. We test content as much as we can. We might test AB, we might AB test videos with a small amount of spend, um, or use an image post to test the waters for a video that would be more time or cost intensive to make. We always think about what the one objective of a video is. Are we after video views? Are we after click-throughs? Are we after sales? We always try and go after just one objective at a time. We're data addicts. We're always thinking about when did people watch our video until? Who was the audience? What was the demographic of the audience? There's a ton of information at fingertips and I think a lot of the time it gets wasted. We think about outcomes, not just proxies. As mentioned earlier, reach and engagement can be great, but they can also be completely worthless. Just because someone has uh, engaged with a video or watched a video, it doesn't necessarily you've done a, a job for your brand. So again, we always try and connect the data to outcomes that matter, such as sales. Finally, have fun. I think if you're not having fun making the content, the chances are your audience won't have fun watching it. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. That was really, really interesting stuff. And um, thank you for your patience. There were a few technical issues, but no problem. It's time for um, some questions for my fantastic speakers, if that's OK. And uh, the first one is uh, for you, David. Um, so we've, you know, we've been talking a lot about, you know, snappy, short ways to grab audiences' attention, you know, through the five, five second video. Um, when do you think it's okay to have more long form stories and video? Do you think that the five second format lends itself well to telling stories, especially if um, you know you're saying you know try try watching your video first without audio? How can you tell good stories without audio in that length of time? Sorry, was that a question for me? Uh, yes, please, if, if possible. How do you think that, um, how can we tell long form stories through um, shorter, snappy videos with, with no audio? What advice would you give there? I don't, I don't think it's difficult, to be honest. I just think you have to treat it as a very different medium and create um, bespoke edits with, with, a, with a certain format or channel in mind. Um, you know, they are very, very different experiences, that kind of lean back video experience that you get with something like Facebook Watch or YouTube versus that very kind of on the move experience that you have in a news feed or that you have with stories. I think mm -hmm. I think you just need to have um, experts on your team who can craft um, content with a specific channel in mind. Yeah. And when you're talking about experts, do you think that obviously I, f I feel like video is just expected from our audiences these days and um, it's, you know, it can be quite to do it really well. It can be quite an expensive um, format to create. Do you think that there's enough um, producer talent out there for brands to grab hold of? Or do you think there needs to be more 
investment in education on video? I, I, I'm not aware of any shortage in um, video creators, to be honest. I think it's a really, really exciting area, and we see a lot of people coming through some from some really, really great um, courses at places like Bournemouth University. Mm -hmm. um, so I, th I think there's a whole generation coming through that have grown up with mobile phones um, and grown up creating video either on a mobile or another device. Um, so I think there's tons of talent out there and it's just a case of tapping into it. In terms of expense, I think that, you know, it, it can actually be super cheap to create video. You know, I touched upon it earlier, but you know, you could spend £100,000 on a video very easily if you're working with yeah. a production company. Um, similarly, you can create video that costs nothing. Um, when we started out, we often shot video in a meeting room. Um, we've shot video on an iPhone before. Uh, you know, I, I think people should should just get out there and try stuff and test it and be creative. Yeah. That's great, thank you. And it kind of um, leads quite nicely back into uh, Rachel's point about um, how everyone is a creator these days. You know, we're carrying um, video in our pockets all the time. Um, and I thought it was really interesting what you were saying, Rachel, about how, um, you know, partnering with different brands can really elevate what you're doing with the work that you did with PAC and how um, it turned out that 29 years worth of content was consumed just through that one campaign. That's incredible. Um, how do you think that brands can elevate themselves more through brand partnerships and how do you assess the risk when you're giving that power over to them? Oh, it's, a good, it's a good question. Um, I, I read an article the other day, I think it was in the drum, which said that uh, sponsorship is dead and long live partnerships. And I it is it is a challenge. I've, I've looked at working with influencers before who have then gone on to have awful headlines. Obviously, no brand wants to be associated with that. Um, you do have to take a risk. And I remember taking... Um, uh, Pakistan by a company called Kyra and I remember taking this into my marketing director and saying you know I really believe we should do this he goes I don't even understand the language they're using why would I get that you know why would anyone consume this so it's like it's because it's not designed for you so you have to look at the metrics that matter one of the challenges with um, partnerships like that is how you can measure them so you have to take softer metrics so what we do is understand firstly what understand the impact of things that we can measure so extra bytes was a good example of that and understanding the value of co-branded content and apply the same hypothesis across the board you have to do your research on the partners you work with and look carefully at all of their metrics to understand if they're the right people for you but you sometimes as well have to take a bit of a risk and make sure you've got the right contracts in place to ensure that if there was anything that you desperately disagreed with as a brand you you could pull it yeah yeah, so it's all about assessing, assessing what's out there, and you know the value that they're going to they're going to bring to the campaign. Thank you. Exactly. Um, we've got a question uh, from the audience from uh, Raphael. Um, we've spoken a lot this morning about published video, but what about live video experiences? Um, are they best kept for events, um, or should they be part of any? any story and campaign where um does live come in and what's the best use of live video and caitlin if you want to take that that would be great oh yes i'm on uh, off mute um you yeah, know it's a great question and something we're looking at um for lo lots of different brands and how brands are thinking about live i mean i think uh what what but where live works is where it is around um, an event. Um, there needs to be almost an appointment to view feeling about live to build that momentum. Um, and back to my um, kind of uh, my point about community, it's about creating something that's very relevant to a community, thinking from a people first point of view rather than a brand out point of view, what do people want to watch, what do they want to engage with, and then with live, thinking about how the audience can interact, um, not just making it a broadcast um, a, a broadcast style piece 
of um, content, but something that audiences can engage with. And I think where it's interesting with live creatively is if you've got audiences engaging, you're moving into almost a real-time creative direction because we're seeing some really interesting stuff where brands are taking how the community is responding and then the live content is changing and evolving as the community reacts. And I think that's where live, um, you know, you've got to use live for what it's what it can do, not just as if it's a piece of broadcast that happens to be in real time, but something that can be very adaptive to the community that's responding to it. Thank you, that's great. And um, I've got time for one final question um, for all of our speakers. Um, it's quite futuristic uh, from one of the members of our audience, Sarah. Um, so the future of video, quite a vague, uh, question and it's probably quite difficult to answer because who knows where we're going to be in the next five years but what about um, te emerging tech what about the use of VR and AR on mobile um, do you think that this is going to lift off or do you think that it's just a novelty for now that people are just throwing around in the ether or do you think that it will you know come to fruition do you want me to have first step at that? Yes, please, if you would. So I think um, it's a, it's a it's a great question. Obviously, one we're spending a lot of time thinking about. I think AR and VR, and particularly AR, is going to be very very important. Um, and we're you know spending a lot of time yeah. thinking yeah. about it and how to make it how relevant to brush. Back to the back to the question video. Um, one thing um, I sorry, sorry is there a real echo on this? Yeah, no. um, one of the things I'm thinking about a lot with the future of video is the context in which the video is, is shown. So because of mobile, I think we can think about um, time of day, weather, geotagging, all of that sort of thing, which at the moment, you know, I'm talking a lot to our clients about think beyond aspect ratio. Yes, we need to think about agile production. Yes, we need to think about sound off, sound on. As David said, long form versus short form, sponsorship, not partnership, or partnership, not sponsorship, all of that. But I think there's something very interesting in creatively thinking always about context and the future of video or the future of video on mobile. I think we'll be taking context into consideration. So that would be my stab at what the future might look like. Thanks. So context is is king. Um, and David, what do you think about the use of VR and, and AR? I mean, surely with Lego, there should be so many um, you know, like key experiences with kids that could really elevate um, their perception of the brand. Yeah, I mean, I think I think they're really very exciting areas. And as as you saw earlier, we have experimented with them. So we did the 360 video uh, where you could experience riding on a Lego roller coaster. We did another one where you, you could experience flying through um, a Harry Potter Hogwarts castle set. So I think my key point is kind of look past the technology and look past the bells and whistles and ultimately what you really need to do is um, create something that will connect with another human. Um, I think sometimes we can get caught up in the technology and sort of the shiny new things that can be done but ultimately at the end of the day you have to be creating a piece of content that is going to move somebody else. Um, so I think that's my sort of overriding way of looking at it there it's it's always think about the human on the other side of the screen rather than the screen itself yeah for sure and Rachel what do you think um so I think some brilliant points have already been made I think AR I agree with Caitlin AR is definitely the more exciting the technology and what David said about let's just not stop and play with something shiny and new I totally echo as well I think we just need to go back to behavior and people love to stop, play, interact. So how can we provide them with an experience which is fun which is, and which is relevant to them to that moment in time? As Caitlin said, it can be that time of day, but understanding what people really want, what they want to consume, when they want to consume it. I know Facebook have a great philosophy around, you know, people, Sometimes I only want to like, scroll past something really fast in feed and you have to catch your attention. Sometimes I want to sit back and consume for like 10 minutes. So understanding 
those behaviors and how we can just provide them with what provide people with what they want and need I think is really really exciting and not just in a way that pushes out messages and ads to them but adds value to their lives essentially. Brilliant so I think that's that's a wrap for today's uh, webinar thank you so much to all of our speakers I think we've all got some um, tips to go and make some video content with real gravity and um, that creates communities and you know changes um, the way people behave and and that will inspire audiences. And thank you again to our partners Spreadfast for joining us as well. Um, you can listen back to any of our webinars on the drum.com forward slash webinars. And please tune in to our next one on the 12th of November where we have lessons from L'Oreal on how to tackle the CMO challenge. Thank you all very much and have a great day.